welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today's video is about the impact that YouTube has had on my luxury handbag collection. Now, this video was born from a suggestion from one of you on a video and I cannot remember when or whom, so I do apologize, but all credit due to you, you know who you are, suggested that I should share my bag collection prior to YouTube. And I thought I would take it one step further and share with you my luxury bag collection before I started watching YouTube, when I started watching YouTube, and now that I've been a YouTuber celebrating three and a half, four years at the moment. So looking back at the photos that I found in my phone, um, there's been a lot of change happening. And um, yeah, if you've been following me for a little while, you've probably seen it too. So let's get into so, it. The first record and memory I have of owning a luxury bag, I think was this Burberry tote. And I've only got pictures of it because I no longer have it. I bought it off eBay. I think it was about hmm, like $350, $400 or something. I used it a lot. It went everywhere with me. I can't tell you the name of it, but I think I really loved the kind of magenta um, leather trim and I love the, um, the house check or the Nova check, I think it's called. And this is a picture of me, obviously, at a side, outside of the front of a brownstone in New York. Yeah, it, it was a vibe. I loved it and... Um, yeah, I think I might have given that one away or sold it. I can't remember, but I used it to death. And the pups have something to say about that. So that picture was taken in New York in 2013, but I owned the bag like for a couple of years before then. Before that, I went to New York in 2012 and I purchased the bag that I still own, my first Chanel. And you will all know this one if you've been following me, the uh, seasonal flap from Full Winter 2011, affectionately known as the Frankenbag on this channel, but in this beautiful lamb leather, small and large quilts with tweed patches. This bag, uh, I fell in love with on my last day in New York. It was the following June, so the collection had been out for quite a while. Saw one in Bergdorf's. They said if I wanted to see another one to go to the Chanel store, and so I did, and I asked about it, and they dug it out from the back. It's just a great bag. It's, it's a great size. It has the double grommets at the top, which we all adore because it means that you can adjust the bag from shoulder to crossbody and vice versa. And for me, even though I wasn't going through, you know, my emo or goth era at the time, it was much more aligned to my style than a regular classic flap. And the price was like 3,500 USD at the time so so long ago and I have a couple of pictures of me styling it uh, to the races a country race meet once and shopping and holidaying um, just a vibe and you can see that I had my short pixie haircut back then how things have changed the next one I also still have and she gets kept in a dust bag and hardly ever used. It is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 35. Why on earth, why on earth I decided to buy a white or ivory Epi Speedy in the 35 size when I lived and worked in a mining and resources town. They're known for being dusty and dirty places. I took it on planes, I put it on the floor. I um I got my bonus one year and I went to Louis Vuitton and I'm like I do not want a monogram bag I don't want it to look like it's a fake from Bali which is where a lot of Australians go for a cheap holiday and buy fake luxury handbags primarily Louis Vuitton um, and I wanted a Louis Vuitton bag but anything that was not a monogram bag was um was on the agenda and i saw this and i have a thing for impractical white things like my lounge suite is white 
stupid with two dogs and <sighs> anyway um but yeah i fell in love with this and my now husband uh helped me pay for it and i got it for christmas i'm going to say in the year 2013 <sighs> i feel like it's not going anywhere because i don't want to sell it because it's been to the spa and it's been repainted but you know they're coming back out and i have one and I'm getting used to my top handles again. It's so heavy though. I don't know what's in it. It just must be this organizer that's in it is quite heavy. Yeah, there's just an organizer in it. And I remember taking this bag on my elopement and uh, subsequent honeymoon. And you'll be able to see that from the picture on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I also still have because I just... I don't know, I can't be bothered selling it or I don't think it's worth anything. It's from Dior and it is like a wallet with a chain. So it's this beautiful patent fuchsia canage print wallet. It has this lovely little piece of hardware on the front. The wallet is really roomy. I mean, back in the days when we had notes and coins and all these cards to fill, now we just have our Apple wallet. And the thing about this one is, I used to use it as a little evening bag because it had a little chain and I used to just wrap the chain around my wrist and hold it like a little clutch. And I think there's a picture of me on my birthday um, at Crown Casino, I want to say. Yeah, again, back in the days of the pixie hair. Still have that one. Not really sure what to do with it. But that was fun as well and I had two versions of that. I'll pop a photo in of the, of the other one that I had which was not patent and probably didn't fare so well. So I think the next one I purchased would be the Louis Vuitton Clapton. It was a very brief run for this bag, but I think it was quite a popular bag in the Demia Abin print with the leather flap and the hardware, which was better, I think, than the S-Lock that's um, on a lot of Louis Vuitton bags because it was really secure, this hardware. You just slide it down, it clicks in and all good. So this one, I chose it with the black leather leather flap. It also came in magnolia, I think, which was like a, a powdery pink and I think also a dark blue color. Not sure, but that bag I bought specifically for going on holidays. I'm going to say it was around 2015-ish. It was a great holiday travel bag, but that's pretty much all I used it for and the reality is when I'm going on holiday, I like part of going on holiday is buying a new bag. I know it's silly, but that's what I like to do. And so I did sell that in one of my first vlog sales and it went really, really quickly. The other bag I bought for that trip was the Louis Vuitton Keepal 45. I did not keep that bag for very long. I found it super cumbersome. Um, yes, it's very flexible and squishy, but Personally, I think it's too small for like a weekend trip. I took it on an overseas holiday as like carry-on to put all my bits and pieces in. But honestly, I feel like a rollerboard, like a smaller um, rollerboard piece of luggage and a, um, and a tote bag sitting on top of it is a way easier version. I'm just gonna say this is what I'm trying to say, like a, a small suitcase, than having this big bag over your shoulder with those nasty little knobbly bits that are meant to stop the strap from slipping. It's not comfortable at all. I, yeah, I used it that one time, I kept hold of it, but I really didn't enjoy it and so I sold it. Probably again in one of my first vlog sales. On that trip I bought this Prada Galleria tote in Milan on a rainy day and I carried it around as though it was like an easy bag to wear. <laughs> and here's a picture of me like eating pizza in Venice, carrying this huge tote. Like didn't even cross my mind that that was awkward or clumsy or um, that it wouldn't be suitable, that I should have a crossbody. It's so weird to me now because we, we put all these rules in place about the type of bags that you should do, um, do that you should take or use for certain occasions. And when there were no rules, I did what I wanted and I knew no different and I loved it. 
that bag I wore into the ground and I actually sold it in my first vlog sale very reluctantly because I thought that um, it was rude to sell a bag in that condition and I priced it accordingly and it went like that. This one was a pretty epic fail. It was a again another limited run by Louis Vuitton but you can see that I'm starting to stretch my muscles into the monogram era but still looking for sensible bags at this time. And this is called the Venus Tote. Now this bag was pretty cool in the fact that that little padlock on the front could be opened and there was a flap in um, that you could uh, lift and put things inside. There was also a hidden flap compartment on the back and inside the organization was pretty good. Although it did put blue kind of microfiber transfer all over my Dior wallet. So the color did run because it was like a dark blue on the inside. I found it a bit boring and so I added that scarf that you can see on it in the bright pink. To me that made it more me and that's probably a clue in terms of how my journey has evolved in that if I have to make it more me it's probably not me in the first place. So that bag I wore a few times but it really wasn't a success. Um, I wore it to my university graduation for my um, one of my postgrads and yeah like it fit the bill but um, if I was doing that again now I'd, it'd be totally different. Then we have a bag that Mr Addiction bought for me on a work trip and look this was the first time he'd ever gone into Louis Vuitton and just bought something for me and unfortunately it wasn't really a winner. Um, he bought originally this exact leather in like a tote, this red or coquelico epi leather tote bag with the twist lock on it and I was like oh no I'm trying to get into smaller bags. Do you mind if we go into Louis Vuitton and swap that out for the actual shoulder bag and he was like no not at all so we took it back I got that bag and I didn't wear that either just the color it's a quite a warm red wasn't really me I tried to wear it like on Valentine's days and things like that but yeah a too structured bag the twist um, the color as I said yep not for me not a fan um, so that one I sold as well and I think there's two more before I started watching YouTube the first one is the Louis Vuitton never for MM world tour so obviously I've gone from not wanting any monogram to starting to get into monogram and needing another tote I thought that the never full itself was a bit plain and so I wanted to go for the world tour and I still have the world tour here it is in the monogram mm size with the black leather and I chose as many little silk screen transfers as I could to decorate the bag and give it personality it has the red interior I'm using it to store stationery and things at the moment but this bag um, not so much used anymore now that I have a GM never full in the classic when I first got it I used it quite a lot and uh, I think that was kind of a birthday present or something so still have that one more difficult to sell because I put my name on it so that obviously makes things tricky there's actually three more so quite a hefty collection before I started watching YouTube the next one is the Valentino uh, Rockstud mini and I sold this bag probably a couple of years into my YouTube journey I kept it I loved it it was really sweet but then I started to purchase more bags that I chose instead of that one and to be honest it's a scary one to store next to other luxury bags because it has little rock studs in it that spike the other bags it was probably not a great purchase because I didn't wear it a lot I always picked it up and tried it but I never wore it a lot I think I priced it well when it sold and it sold pretty quickly I did love it so much that I bought another one when I was in Paris I'm going to say 20 15 no 2018 maybe I picked up this beautiful Valentino camera bag with the rock studs and this cool locking mechanism on the front slip pocket in the Le Bon Marche store. Loved it, wore it all through the rest of my trip through Spain, parked it for a while, picked it up, wear it on the weekends, parked it for a while, thought about selling it, gave it to Connor to sell 
and then quickly pulled it back before I went on holiday to Europe last year in September because I didn't have any neutral crossbody bags and this one is a great one and um, I'm glad I rescued it because it is such a great neutral it's quite feminine with an edge it's really practical as well and yeah very very happy that I still have this one in my collection and the final one before I started to watch a lot of YouTube was my Chanel wallet on chain so I went into Chanel I wanted to treat myself because I was about to start my business and I chose this black caviar very fine caviar wallet on chain but it's the golden class I've always been drawn to like a unique hardware situation on a handbag so this one is kind of three-dimensional you flip up the buckle and there's a hole and it's kind of I think way more secure than those snap button or magnetic closures it's got a nice long chain um, which you know does look quite decorative when you wear it a lot of the the, um, the gold has worn away on mine because I have worn it and worn it and worn it and I will continue to wear it I have one walk that's all I need and yes I think I picked this up for a very good price because now I looked on the website the other day and they're going for like eight thousand dollars I think I would have it would have started with a three what I paid for this one I started watching YouTube big time I was researching to buy more Chanel bags whilst I was on that holiday in Spain and I went into quite the rabbit hole. That's probably when I bought most Chanel handbags whilst I was watching a lot of YouTube before I had a YouTube channel. So let me tell you where it all started. I'm going to say I purchased this reissue in Barcelona and I think I got like 14.4% VAT refund. I liked that it was edgy, that it had the ruthenium hardware. I was I, I desperately wanted to buy a Chanel bag whilst I was on holiday and the sales associate kind of said to me look you know it's very rare that you can be offered a classic bag like this one if I was going to recommend you to buy one for your holiday it would be buy the classic because they're so hard to get and you will never be able to save you know this kind of money which all made sense but the size of this one I think is the small size which meant it didn't have a long enough chain to cross body and I'm not a I'm not a girly girl I like a little bit of a twist and I just found it was too clumsy to wear. I'd pick it up, put it on, then take it off and try something else. And so really it was unworn most of the time and I think I sold that on consignment through Purse Affair. So it didn't stay around long despite the saving, but I didn't do too badly on it because I got that saving on it in the first place. I've actually just found a picture of all of my black Chanel bags. Like, who was this woman? <laughs> uh, the next one, and I, I will show you the two bags, and then I will show you this photo. The next one was trying to replace that Chanel classic. So because I had consigned through Persifer and had such a lovely experience, I was working with them to find the ultimate caviar jumbo classic flap from Chanel in silver hardware and when this one came along it was a 2012 model i think still like super puffy quilts it's in beautiful condition i wear it in a very me way i think i was able to buy it for five thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> crazy and i jumped on it full set immaculate condition still pretty much is it's it's a beautiful bag. I will keep it because there's no chance I'm probably ever buying another one. You know, I look at this and I look at the rest of my collection and I think, who was this girly? And the final one in the photo that I'm going to show you is this little black lambskin mini rectangular. The story about that one, it was just before Christmas. I had uh, gone into Chanel and there was a chap there and he was choosing between two bags and one of them was this little black mini rectangular and he had to go away and think about it and I just zoomed in and said, I I'm going to take that. <laughs> if it's for sale, I'm taking it. And they wrapped it up for me and the rest is history. 
and yeah this photo that I'm going to show you now is all my black Chanel bags I still have three of them but two have gone I've since sold that mini rectangular because I replaced it with something else from Chanel that I loved better that I think was more accurately representative of me and my personality and my style but yeah they that I would have to say that they were st I was starting to be influenced there now the next one which is this, which is an obvious influenced purchase was the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse I had um, built a bit of a relationship at Louis Vuitton and I'd asked about a Pochette Matisse when they were in the height of their craziness and I think it was only three weeks later that my sales associate rang me and said we've got one but I had to pay for it over the phone it was a big deal of course I bought the um, the bandeau to go on the Vachetta um, handle because that's what everyone was doing I don't have it anymore so here's a photograph of it I never liked it as soon as I bought it I never liked it I mean all through Europe I saw people carrying them and I thought they looked so chic but I never liked it on me. It was just not me. I feel like it was really masculine. I felt like it looked too practical. I just didn't like the silhouette. I still don't. It was a very funny one for me to talk about because I had to have it. I had to have it and then I hated it. And I, every time I dressed, I dressed for the bag and, I, and then I hated what I was wearing. So yeah, it's rather interesting, isn't it? The next one was also very influenced. The Dior My Lady Dior ABC, everyone had to have a My Lady Dior and I did not want black and I tried my hardest to find a seasonal colour that wasn't black and I didn't even look at black ones, I was that stubborn and then eventually I tried the black one for, you know, comfort and size and I really loved the combination with the champagne gold hardware and so, of course, I bought it. And again, it was one of those bags that were very occasionally. I found it really clumsy. I didn't like the length of the strap. It was too short and cumbersome. I bought straps to go with it. They didn't work. Yeah, I sold it and I actually made my money back on that bag because there'd been so many price increases that mine was in such um, pristine condition for the years that I had it that by the time I sold it, I think it was like almost doubled in price. This next one was so hyped, probably the most hyped piece and it's all YouTube and social media's fault and it's the small classic flap from Chanel from the 19 spring summer campaign in the iridescent pink. Everyone had to have one, everyone, it was the bag that everyone was unboxing and I engaged a personal shopper to help me source it and as soon as she got it I was so excited she got it from Sloan Street in London I opened it up and I'm like hmm like I don't even have any pictures of me trying it on or anything I just thought it was so ugh, very girly very not me at all so yeah I held on to it for a few months and then sold it and I actually made a profit so not so bad now this final one I would say is the last one I was like heavily influenced to buy and then the influence starts to wean off. So this one is the Chanel GST. I think when I sent that um, the pink bag to Purse Affair I did a deal on this GST. It was in immaculate condition. GSTs had kind of were on the nose. People weren't talking about them. People weren't loving them and I wanted to try one and again I got one full set beautiful condition and I used that bag and I loved it and I only sold it kind of recently because I really wasn't finding that I was drawn to that style of bag and yeah we had a great time together and I don't regret it for a second but they're still selling for a very high prices I think I got mine for like three something pre-loved sold it for about four something and now they're selling pretty consistently for around five six something at AUD so yeah that's pretty pretty crazy okay so apparently my camera overheated because I was waffling on too much about handbags but guess what there's more the last of the influenced bags and that was the Chanel boy bag again the more edgy Chanel styles I was drawn to and so when I saw this beautiful cool grey silvery boy bag in the medium size the new medium I believe with shiny silver hardware I was like wow I love it I waited and waited and waited for someone to serve me 
and basically just took it straight off the shelf. Um, well, not that one. They had another one, but I was like, can somebody serve me? I need to buy this bag now before somebody else does. Beautiful bag. Loved it. No complaints. I mean, the thing with the boy bag is the size of the flap is like as the same, the same as the bag. So it covers the whole front of the bag. So you've got to pull this whole thing up when you're wearing it and then, you know, dig around for your things and it gets creases and... I don't know, I just found I didn't really reach for greys, but it took me a little while to not, to figure it out, but consequently I don't have that one left in my collection either. I don't know if we saw this on anybody's channel at all. I want to say we, I mean my husband and I, because he bought it for me for Christmas, and I'm sure he did off the back of seeing it on somebody's YouTube channel. I cannot recall whom. But the second bag, he luxury bag, he bought me and absolutely blew my socks off was the Petite Boite Chapeau. And um, this bag I, I rarely use, but it's such a treasure in my collection. I just adore it. Um, totally shocked me opening this on Christmas Day. Just the two of us. It was a real, real treat. The S lock on this is so, so tiny. I'd say it was semi-influenced because we saw it on YouTube, but not so much that, you know, everybody was buying it. God, I wish I could remember who bought it. I can't remember. I cannot. But I love it and obviously I'm keeping it. So then I started on YouTube and well, hasn't it been a ride? I've had bags come and go into my collection. And if you have a look behind me, you can see a whole bunch of color and interesting shapes and novel styles and different hides and things. I've got metallics, I've got Galusha, I've got Python, I've got Crocodile, um, I have beautiful like scrunchy handles, I've got Wicker. Um, acid greens and tweeds and plastic baskets and seagulls and I think it's been when I have really found my way the best part about YouTube has been the fact that I've constantly been talking about and reflecting on the pieces that I have and I love and why and as a result of having that constant communication by creating content and engaging with my subscribers that I've really been able to solidify what my style is, what my aesthetic is, what I enjoy wearing and realistically my collection looks like nobody else's. Um, my collection is not one that, um, what would I say? The, the bags that I love, they're not popular. They don't draw views. My unboxings don't really draw views compared to other unboxings of more traditional bag. I, a lot of my most watched videos were back in the early days when I had those really popular ones, like a comparison between my um, Chanel rectangular and I bought a Chanel square at one stage. Um, both in the mini sizes or Lady Dior review um, is another one of my most watched comparisons between um, the Lady Dior and the Fendi Mini Peekaboo. I'm doing this like as if I'm holding the bags. Like they continue to be some of my most watched videos because they are the popular bags they continue to be and I don't that's not me and I feel like YouTube has helped me to find my way and to find my style and it's um it's been great to connect with so many of you who are doing the same thing who are on the same journey so i hope you've liked this little um blast from the past through the lenses of pre-youtube watching youtube and doing youtube which is you know obviously what some of what you see behind me some of those original pieces have hung around this whole time i'd say back from like 2010 till now so the last 15 odd years who knows what the future will bring i'd love to know if you were going to summarize the changes in your collection in the same zones so pre-watching youtube watching youtube and perhaps if you're a youtuber what have you noticed have been the differences in your style journey and the pieces that you have in your collection as a result? 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell so you're notified of when my videos go up because I'm throwing the schedule out and just putting them up when I feel like it. I'd love to see you back for the next one. Until then, ciao.